good evening. Um, I'm ready to get straight into this. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about someone who's been a big influence on myself and the magazine I edit called White Fungus. That's the radical Jewish philosopher, thinker and critic Walter Benjamin. 20 seconds is a bit longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> That's good, I can stretch this out a little bit. Uh, Benjamin was born in 1882 in Berlin and uh, the son of a upper middle class Jewish family in Berlin. Um, he described his childhood as comfortably, something like comfortably, but now, nevertheless, he would go on to be one of the most radical thinkers in Germany of the 20s and 30s. World War I was a very radicalizing event for him. Two of his friends committed suicide as a protest against the war, and his hero and sort of philosophical mentor of that time, Gustav Weineken, uh, outraged him by giving a speech pro the war aimed at the German youth. Benjamin uh, cut off ties with his mentor, went to Switzerland and started studying at Bern University, uh, studying German Romanticism and getting a PhD finally in 1919. After the war he returned to Germany and actually had plans to edit his own literary publication, his own literary journal when it was all set to go, but the finances, perhaps realizing the cryptic and non commercial nature of Benjamin's writing, pulled out before the first issue was finalized. So that was on the scrap heap. Uh, he instead went back to the university, into the arms of the institution, to Frankfurt and uh, to become a professor. But when he submitted his thesis on 17th century Baroque German drama, the university rejected it outright as incomprehensible. Uh, so that was his literary. Uh, his academic career in theatres. Uh, a good friend of his was uh, Adorno, Theodore Adorno, the Marxist thinker and cultural critic uh, known for his uh, polemic against commercial filmmaking, enlightenment as mass deception, and he brought Benjamin in to the, the Frankfurt School, which is a group of philosophers, and that gave him a small amount of financial backing. Adorno uh, would champion Benjamin long after his death, even, and uh, said of him, one, wrote of him once with the promise of Benjamin, a promise, quote, a promise that it all becomes all the more urgent to recollect now that the overwhelming powers of the status quo have clearly sworn never again to permit anything comparable to Benjamin's unique fascination to recur. But Benjamin refused uh, the title of philosopher and uh, saw himself more as a critic. He mixed in philosophy, history, literature, politics, art, everything into a fragmentary, anti-systematic approach to writing. He became good friends with Bertolt Brecht and uh, Adorno and the other Frankfurt School philosophers were concerned about the influence that there would be on Benjamin's writing, but it was arguably quite positive. His writing got clearer, very politically charged, and became a very sustained attack on capitalism and industrialization. Uh, another very big influence on him, a lifelong friend, Gershom Scholem, uh, was uh, also Jewish and shared a love of art and influenced Benjamin to become involved and very interested in Jewish mysticism and the Kabbalah. Mysticism was a big part of his writing, much to the ire of Orthodox Marxists. Probably the most famous work of Benjamin's is the 1935 uh, essay Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, which recalls the, the effects of art as the new technologies as they've appeared on the actual process of art itself. He talked of the argument, the debate in the 19th, the 19th century as to the merits of photography versus painting, saying from this, his point of view it was kind of devious and confused because they forgot to ask the essential question whether or not the invention of photography had not changed the entire nature of art. Uh, he was a critic of film um, as the sort of culmination of the reproducibility of images and he quoted uh, Duhamel who was quite a, had quite a negative view of film, his quote, I can no longer think what I want to think. My thoughts have been replaced by moving images. Uh, as the reproducibility of images and the standardization of image making has shifted the very nature of art, it's gone from something that was originally ritualistic and belonged to the cult to something instead focused on the values of exhibition and 
commercial dollars in a very sort of utilitarian uh, form. Uh, when Hitler uh, invaded, uh, took over in 1933, he fled to uh, Paris and began still writing there in German journals under a pseudonym, began writing, on, working on a book called Paris, uh, Capital of the 19th Century. It was going to be, it got finished, but it was going to be quite a critique. Um, and this, uh, unfortunately though, uh, Hitler went into France and he tried to flee and get through to Spain, to Portugal, to get to America where his friends Adorno was living. But he, as he got with, his, with a group of Jewish people, got into uh, just across the French border and got intercepted by secret police, thinking he was going to be turned back to France, he committed suicide. Uh, the group was let through the next day. His last piece of writing that he did uh, just before he killed himself was uh, called uh, A Thesis on the Philosophy of History, which challenged, attacked the historical, histor traditional historical view of history as kind of a narrative of progress, of causally connected events. And he wrote in this, in every era, the attempt must be made anew to wrest tradition away from a conformism that is about to overpower it. The Messiah comes not as the Redeemer, he comes as the subduer of the Antichrist and of Cleese Angel. This is how one pictures the angel of history. His face is turned toward the past. When we perceive a chain of events, he sees one single catastrophe which keeps piling wreckage upon wreckage and hurls it in front of his feet. The angel would like to stay, awaken the dead and make whole what has been smashed. But a storm is blowing from paradise. It got caught in his wings with such violence that the angel can no longer close them. The storm irresistibly propels him into the future to which his back is turned, while the pile of debris in front of him goes skyward. This storm is what we call progress. Thank you.